Hey folks, as we promised, this week we're going to go over how to do motion capture, in particular using the Track IR infrared camera along with the Track Skull version 2 from Monkey Basic. But before we do that, we're going to cover this little setup right here. Remember that our purpose behind designing our last skull was to use it for convention work. And because of that, we're going to have to control that skull sometimes from a long distance. And that's going to require that we have transmitters and receivers. So we'll show you how this little setup is done. If you look at our setting, you can see the SSC32U along with the micro USB that's connected to the computer. This is going to be a power source that we'll use only if we're going to do one skull. The reason for that is that this power source is only 3 amps. And you need to figure that each servo that you have pulls about 0.5 amps. So this will only allow us to use 6 servos. In the case of something like Eric that uses 7 servos, we actually don't have enough amps to power it. Later we'll show you how to use a larger version, something similar to this, that will also be 5 volts, but will be 40 amps. Now looking over here, you'll see that we actually have our cables now coming from our SSC32U to this little board. This little board is actually a transmitter. And that transmitter will go to a receiver. And you can see that receiver over here connected to our skull. Now that transmitter will be connected through a CAT6 line over to this transmitter right here that is connected to our skull. Now if we look carefully, let's take this off. This is just our little protection device. You can get these at Home Depot and cut these to the length that you want. So if you look and refer back to a previous video, these are servos 0, 1, 2, and 3. They are connected to servos 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this board, and this transmitter transmits over to servos 1, 2, and 3, and 4 on this board. Now we only have our servos connected to 1, 3, and 4 because this is only a two-axis skull with the mouth. So you might be wondering, what is the purpose of this? In this case, we have a 50-foot cord. So that if we're at a convention and we need to control Eric manually, we can do it through this board connected to this 50-foot cord remotely. So no one will see us if we're behind a corner. And we have a camera set up just to look at Eric. That camera will tell us what everybody's saying. Eric can perform interactively while he talks to the audience, while it's being controlled from 50 feet away through this system. Now in general, I really hate unboxing videos. However, in this case, we do need to show what's in it because we're going to use it. We're not just going to do an unboxing. We're actually going to show how this is done. This is the infrared camera. Now it has a couple of other things in the box. With the camera comes this little clamp and it has a little magnet on it so that you can attach this to the clamp and then this can sit on top of your computer. In my case, my computer screen is actually a bit too large for this so it won't actually be aiming at me. We need this to be just right about chin level or maybe eye level. So you have your camera, you have the clamp and a USB to go to the computer. The next thing that comes with the Track IR is this little Track Clip Pro. Now this is designed so that it will clip on to your headphones. Now this is included as a little extra piece that even says, okay, includes Track Clip Pro. I will never use this because I just don't use headphones. Now the final piece you'll need is this right here. And these are the little sensors that the infrared camera is going to look at. 
Now, unfortunately, I can't just attach that to the top of my head, so we have to have something to attach it to. And if you remember Eric Goes Fishing, his video, we have his little fishing cat. Now, this just clips right on. You just slide it on like this. And it will go to any little cat that you have. So with this attached, just put your hat on your head and the infrared camera will look for these sensors. So let's go ahead and hook up our two axis skull and see how this works. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to load track skull. With that done, you can see our skull is just kind of hanging here, not doing anything. The camera is actually disconnected. We're going to go ahead and connect the camera and we're going to connect the joystick right afterwards. We'll connect the camera first and then we'll connect the joystick. The reason is, is that the camera is only going to control the head movements, but it's not going to control the jaw. You still have to control the jaw using the joystick. So now we have it connected. Let's go ahead and put on our little cat. And you can see now the skull is following my motion. It's following the movement of my head. So let's go ahead and center this. And now you be you so now that we're centered, you have to be very careful where you move your head because you can throw this thing completely off and you have to go back and center it again. Also, it's important that you not be right up on top of the camera. You need to have maybe about five feet between you and the camera when you do this. Now you're going to have to practice with your skull just like you did with track skull. You have to set the particular servos. Now I've already set these servos but I give these servos a very limited range because this thing can really go nuts on you when you're trying to sit here and set these servos and your head is moving because you're trying to look in different directions. So you have to be very careful because some of the lesser skulls, those that aren't as solid as this thing, they might end up breaking. You might end up destroying your servos, you might end up breaking some of the arms, you might end up even cracking a portion of your skull. So be very careful when you do this. Give yourself some distance between you and the skull and set very low tolerances when you first start off trying to make the movements. So let's go ahead and hit OK. We've got our joystick connected, we've got our camera connected, we set our servos and now we're going to turn it on Click to connect, and I'm going to stand back a little bit. And now you can see, as I move, it moves. And you can see it, it has, I'm moving my head a little bit, tilting my head a little bit too far, trying to look at what I'm doing instead of looking at the, the camera, and it goes off. So I'm going to center it again. So now you can see I can nod my head, and be very careful when you go to do the rotate because it's trying to throw itself off. Again, nod. You want to watch that screen where you have your three little dots. You want to be very careful because if you're not and you throw that out of the range, it goes crazy. So try and keep it centered. And don't look at your skull because if you do, everything gets thrown way off. Doesn't know where to go. And then you have to go back and recenter. Now it might seem that this is a little bit more trouble than it's worth, but the truth is, this gives you a very smooth motion. And there are times when you might want something that's smoothed out like this, where you know you want a really, really smooth animation. And I can see times when you might want to use this. For the most part, I don't, but there will be particular times when this might come in handy just because of how smooth you can make that motion. And remember your joystick controls your mouth. So let's go ahead and see how this works if we do a recording. We'll add our audio. We'll go back and add Drunken Sailor again. And we'll hit record.
ahead and disconnect. Turn this off so we don't put any pressure on our servo. Disconnect the camera and disconnect the joystick. So you can see it does have its uses. It functions exactly the way it's supposed to be. But that can be dangerous at times because this skull has a tendency to go out of control. So while it has its uses, you need to be very careful with it. Much more careful than you are with the joystick. Because with this thing on your head, if it doesn't see the sensors properly, that, that skull will go off track and it may start to bounce around violently enough to to do some damage to your skull so be careful with your settings and be careful not to start looking around at everything once you put that cap on because that sensor is following whatever you do you get out of the range and that skull will start to go crazy so how useful it is to you is going to depend on how disciplined you are if you have your settings set before you actually start to set it for your animations you're going to find that it actually gives you a really smooth motion. It's another trade-off. You get the smoother motion, but you have to be very careful with it. Wow, my vision hat. <laughs> Wait, Eric, I'm working on something. Stop moving. I'm connected. Idiot. Say good night, Eric. Good night, Eric.